Hello and welcome back to another run of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken. Welcome back uh, fans and friends of uh, the XCOM 2 franchise. It is time for another attempt of that wonderful game. After I have just finished uh, the Rocky Balboa four-man campaign where we beat legendary Iron Man with basically just rookies and wet noodles, it is time to up the ante a little bit. The common feedback that I received is you guys really want to see more suffering and you basically want to see how I get my teeth kicked in. Well, that is fine. I'm up for the challenge and I will present to you the next run, which we call Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble, as mentioned, is the first more modded campaign, but I took uh, extended research in making sure that this year is even applicable for uh, console players, so I'm trying to only modify the alien side uh, of the house and leave the experience for XCOM as vanilla as possible. That way we do have a good baseline of how difficult this is actually going to become. So for once I cannot immediately jump into the game, but instead I would like to invite you to a tour of the halls of horror of mods that I have been recommended and we are mercilessly slapping every single one of them into the game. We're running a list of around 100 mods. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll keep it brief and snappy and I will leave a link in the doobly-doo below so that you can essentially play with the mods yourself or a fraction of them, whatever floats your boat. So let's jump into the mods and see what we're up against. So here we go. I divided that section into three subsections. Basically, we're starting with game altering mods. Then I go over a quick summary of some quality of life mods. And finally, we're looking into all of the new enemies. As I mentioned, the idea behind it was to keep the baseline for XCOM as stable as possible. So we're not going to get any benefits. Uh, if anything, we're going to nerf XCOM a little bit. And what are we really up against in the Royal Rumble campaign? The first mod that I've chosen is called Diverse Alien by Force Devil, and it's really a combination of two mods. In a nutshell, what it does is it allows pods to be composed of all of the new aliens together and uh, really mix and match, which was important. Elsewise, you're not seeing all of the new enemies. And secondly, and that's even more important, it will increase the pot size of up to four enemies per pot in the later stages of the game, which is more than twice the amount of enemies that are already in the game. So uh, on average, you can assume this mod here will double the number of enemies and will allow really, really nasty combinations of enemies. Moving on uh, to the next one, which was the yellow alert. And for those of you who aren't aware, uh, it is even yellow alert version two and not the light version of it. So it is the harder version. Essentially the moment that uh, the advent forces will see any form of activity that could be uh, a grenade, a yelling of a civilian, an explosion or whatnot, the entire map begins to uh, set to yellow alert and actually run towards the target. That also includes that uh, in the version 2.0, the enemies will come in pre-triggered. So uh, the moment that a fight breaks out, we will see the entire map coming at us and we will have pretty awesome firefights and potentially get our teeth kicked in. Number three is going to be a nerf to the repeater since a lot of the enemies will have incredible amounts of hit points and armor. Uh, basically, the repeater is one of the few items that got the ban hammer. And instead of running the standard repeater uh, that had a 5, 10, 15 percent uh, insta kill chance, we're running a repeater that has a 0 percent insta kill chance but increases the critical damage. Whether or not we're going to see a lot of them will be seen, but essentially, repeaters are out. Then the next one, one of my favorites, no lost headshots, and that will make the loss a bane to deal with, as uh, it is no more cleaning up of loss with the sidearm of a sniper. It will actually mean we have to fully commit and go through them. Maybe, just maybe, I will build a lure and will use an ultrasonic lure to my advantage, because it also means Advent can't headshot them. The next one is a particularly nasty beast, which is called Ruler's Region. 
And we're going to see that in between each time when we defeat the rulers, not only will they regain their entire armor, but they will also regain 33% of their health, which means uh, the first time you got to uh, knock them down 33%, the second time 66%, and the third time you actually need to go through the entire hit point bar of the ruler. This is going to be such a no fun mod, you uh, cannot imagine how much I'm not looking forward to do that. On top of that, we do have alien side goals. I have looked into a lot of permanent dark event mo uh, mods. The problem is that those were not compatible and really led to instable game states. This here is the only one that I could find which was really interesting and hardcore. There are essentially seven additional projects. Projects Thunder Mountain, Ultramarine, uh, then Dark Cloak, uh, Arbor Gate. I don't even want to know all of them in detail, but essentially what it does is besides the Avatar project, there is a lot extra research. And since we're playing with permanent dark events uh, plus this year, we'll add another layer of permanent dark events the moment that they come in. So that's going to suck quite a bit. And on top of that, we're going to make it the true Royal Rumble. So there are going to be two new factions. The first one is called Reapers or Raider Faction rather. And it contains out of a set of, I think, six or eight different enemies, which will scale over time. Net net, these enemies will create a third faction, just like the Lost uh, third uh, faction to Advent. These are, so to speak, a fourth faction in that case and will act individually. I have my suspicion the way that the AI is coded that we will see um, everybody against Saiken, but that might just be my hunch here. Uh, I have no idea how it works and whether or not it's good, but it looks uh, fantastic and I wanted to give it a try. And finally, because I had been recommended quite a uh, uh, few times, the Dark Elders Raider faction, that is another neutral faction, very similar to the normal Raiders, but just more hardcore. I specifically wanted to keep it lore friendly, so I would ask you to not imagine raiders from the Warhammer 40k universe, just imagine these here as maybe psionic uh, humans that have uh, escaped advent facilities and are now running rampage on the streets, uh, completely crazy and mutilated in their minds. They use their newfound uh, semi-psionic powers to just uh, run amok and uh, cause terror on the streets. So this is how we're going to flavor them. Uh, the looks of it, uh, if you wouldn't know that it is Warhammer 40k, could also uh, be in the universe of XCOM. So let's uh, try to not have too many Warhammer references. So that's just a base kit and that in itself would potentially already make for an incredibly hard run. It's legendary Iron Man, double enemy size, no repeaters. Um, we're looking at yellow alert, which in itself uh, makes for pretty hard uh, rework, no headshots. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, we have rulers region, additional super hardcore events, plus two extra factions, but I have a little bit more in stock for you. And here we go with the quality of life mods. Uh, this is not uh, so much adding additional difficulty to the game as um, it really just increases quality of life. So I'll go through them really quick. I have installed approximately 10 bug fixes and a few just visual mods. Again, you can find the entirety of the playlist below, but I wanted to highlight four quality of life mods before we go to all of the additional enemies that we're going to face. Uh, number one was a unit flex extended, and this is really a compilation of uh, many things. Uh, number one, it uh, just makes it uh, that uh, so that there is perfect information available. Lots of you wanted to see perfect information. I personally find it a little bit cl uh, cluttering, but with so many new enemies, it is actually a, a fun addition. And secondly, you will find that uh, per enemy category, uh, there are different colors. So that uh, specifically with additional factions makes it a bit more um, yeah, serviceable. On top of uh, that, it will also show new signs for different uh, status effects that are running, as well as a lot of other things. So it's kind of an extended HUD, so to speak. Nothing more than a visual update. We got more target icons, this just makes it easier to target in a mass firefight that I'm expecting. We got evacuate all, which you asked for multiple times, and free camera rotation. On top of that, I installed about 
10 uh, bug fixes and 10 uh, speed up mods that will just make the game uh, specifically faster in between reloading attempts, uh, camera settings, etc. etc. so that we can handle the amount of action that is going on without creating two hour episodes. But now it wouldn't be a second run if I would only make uh, the game a little bit more difficult. We need that little special salt and that this time comes from a plethora of really really hardcore enemies that I would like to introduce to you. Very good. Now we're at the point where the run really, really becomes hardcore. So I have a lot of enemies installed and I will just take you through the most important changes uh, to make the intro somewhat serviceable. The kicker of this run is that the double enemy squad size compared with our inability to kill enemies will also lead to just very, very long firefights. But that assumes you are fighting against the normal enemies. That, however, is not the case. We have installed, of course, for starters, a better advent. And you already know that that in itself is a stiff challenge on legendary Iron Man. Uh, the author himself has mentioned that it was never con uh, concepted to be played in Legendary Iron Man, specifically due to the many reaction shots. But uh, we have a little bit more than that. We also have a better Chosen, just like in our ABA run. Um, it shouldn't become uh, boring. And we got a few additional enemies. Uh, let me introduce the Hive. Most of you might be familiar with this mod. This is basically a compilation of many, many uh, um, chrysalid-based enemies in one. We've seen some of them in the ABA version, specifically the uh, Queen, as well as some of the uh, drones. But the Hive is way more extended. You can see Rippers, Warriors, Drones, Chameleons, Infectors, Infected Zombies, uh, Hybrids, etc, etc. So there is a really long list. And at least from the description of the mod, it read like an absolute nightmare since the Chrysalids will very regularly come. There are even Chrysalid civilians, uh, so hidden ones uh, that, uh, that uh, will uncover and stand right next to you, just like faceless ones, but in a little bit more nasty version. On top of that, I added Biodiversion 2.0, which is a set of mods. This is again a compilation of uh, quite a few uh, bio troops, bio beasts, bio commanders, and bio events. The, the idea behind uh, the biodiversion mods is an acid based uh, type of uh, groups. You will see basically everything from acidic uh, losts over uh, acidic snakes, uh, acidic faceless ones, mutants. So, and of course, quite a few uh, acid based troops, as you can imagine. Those seem to be a little bit more hardcore than the normal uh, Advent Troopers, so I figured we want to give it a go. Plus, all of them, to my understanding, do have acid rounds, which will make it extra nasty. Keep in mind, acid uh, does burn through armor and also shreds them on top of it, plus deals damage over time. But not enough of that. We added Purge Units, which is the same, but in a fire version. And this fiery version uh, was rated as one of uh, the more difficult uh, mods for specifically beginning and mid-game. So there will be quite a few fire-based units, as you can see. Not only um, Advent Purifiers, but Advent Purifier Heavy Gunners, um, SMG, uh, and uh, aggressive um, flamethrower units. So I'm looking forward for that. And if you do have uh, acid and fire, of course, ice should not be missing. This time we're running Children of the King 2.0, which is basically a mod that includes, I think, six or eight uh, children, princes of uh, the uh, Snake King. And all of them do have ice abilities, are quite an icy menace to deal with. Plus, they offer another source of uh, the frost grenades, which I found helpful because that was my only criticism to ABA. 
you do not have in a better advent a possibility to use the ice mechanic uh, that uh, the game wants from you in a regular fashion because you can't uh, produce these grenades but apparently with this mod just if you go through those mini rulers you will get at least a few more so you can lose one or two which certainly will not happen in this run um, moving on the next one would be advents even more robots and uh, that one is a nasty little bugger um, the other ones always had an elemental theme this one here just has a mechanical theme and it is just uh, fantastic when i was reading through it it seemed to be really really bad uh, right control mech uh, advanced repair bots uh, sectopod hunters which are larger sectopods and then the sectopod annihilator which apparently uh, this is a normal sectopod, and this is a sectopod annihilator, which means these sectopods look up to that sectopod, uh, and it seems six to eight times uh, larger than uh, than them, just from a volume perspective. I can only imagine it has potentially tons of hit points and many nasty abilities that will keep us busy. But I figured, you know what? Just robots aren't fun. Uh, let's make all of them more difficult. So the base sectopod uh, is now running around with mega, uh, miserly. What was it? I think it now gained a blade storm ability and 12 armor plus 90 hit points, just for good measure. Imagine that since uh, the even more robots mod uses that as a baseline all of these sectopods now run around with almost 100 hit points blade storm light uh, lightning field abilities and quite a bit of armor then we got world war uh, z which is a zombification of the lost keep in mind they can no longer be headshotted and now on top of them you will find not only a very wide variety of uh, losts, but you will also find bigger packs of losts. On top of that, ABA introduces boomers and other spawn uh, losts. So when the losts will arrive, it will actually look like in World War Z um, and they will storm through our ranks. The Spectre Rewamp was one that was requested multiple times. Uh, the, I'll just quickly go over it. Essentially, uh, in the future, the Spectre uh, will be able to Shadow Clone a unit. And even if the Spectre dies, the Shadow Clone still remains active. So you got to deal with that, which I found quite uh, yeah, interesting. Um, that being said, I have also installed a mod called a Mock X which is um, a rare uh, event that can happen from time to time where Advent basically clones XCOM uh, type units with the same classes that we do have and random skills. So you're effectively fighting a full-fledged XCOM squad, but with AI skills and uh, AI uh, skillings, which I found uh, curious. So they will come on top of it. Uh, plus, these kind of uh, shadow clones will uh, will be a menace to be dealt with throughout the run. Then I installed the Praetorians. The Praetorians, to my understanding, are kind of uh, not only uh, various advent guards, uh, so Praetorian guards, sterilizers, shield maidens, lieutenants and captains, all of them kind of with a uh, look and feel of a very grim, dark and much, much stronger appeal. But of course, there is also a Praetorian uh, sectopod. Keep in mind that scales very much with the sectopod buffs and the more um, robots. So I wouldn't be surprised if we can see uh, if we see um, retaliating Praetorian sectopods. So I can not wait to to play that. And of course, it wouldn't be a full robot uh, overhaul if there wouldn't be an additional ruler. So yes, you heard that right. There is a fourth ruler in town, this time a spark ruler. Apparently, it uh, runs around with uh, 120 hit points, if I remember correctly, and quite a bit of armor. So this one is not to be trifled with. 
Which brings us to late game enemy units. I added a pack called LEB's late game units and it has a few of them. The most infamous one is potentially the Rift Keeper, which is just a gatekeeper in really, really nasty. So since I upgraded the sector port, I felt it is only fair if we got gatekeepers on top of it. The gatekeeper has all of the nasty abilities that you could imagine. Uh, rifts, null lances, you name it, and of course uh, can spawn hundreds of zombies, which to my understanding, even if he dies, will still prevail. Which brings us to another psionic threat, the ethereal restoration. Um, that was a great mod just from uh, the looks of it, and I love the ethereals in XCOM 1. Well, guess what? Now they're back and they are meaner than ever. So apparently these are kind of the uber uh, enemies on the uh, psionic side. I again cannot wait to fight them. Uh, they seem to be coming in pairs and uh, if anything is true from XCOM 1, the Ethereals with their 50% complete damage mitigation and reflection were not to be trifled with. On top of it, I figured if we're putting so much effort in new enemies, why wouldn't we just make all of the standard enemies harder on top of that? Um, there is a full, uh, a harder war uh, collection. I just used uh, those advanced aliens here as an example. But essentially what that does is all of the sets of uh, the normal enemies are being buffed. You will see more guns, harder guns, more uh, weapon loadouts, more grenades, and just overall more beefy enemies. And finally, we're coming to the last and most certainly not least uh, group of enemies, the shielded enemies. And uh, one of them, the smaller version, so to speak, are the Paladin Shield uh, Busters. These are units which uh, act as shield bearers, but they can come in multiple packs. And as you can see, they do have growing shields over time. So. I can already imagine when we're fighting like 10 or 20 enemies and then one of these guys comes in and everybody gets five extra hit points. That is uh, something that Saiken just adores, uh, those type of enemies that are scaling with the difficulty on top of it. But it wouldn't be a full-fledged run if we wouldn't look into the uh, potentially most recommended uh, mod in that case, which were the Praetorians. The Praetorians are uh, the arch nemesis of difficulty, apparently. I've never played uh, with that mod, so we're going to see about it. But these are originally, again, Warhammer-themed, uh, to my understanding, um, and uh, are very, very heavy units with ultra-heavy shields. They are wrecking uh, shotguns and uh, melee weapons, which apparently pop for 20 damage a, uh, a shot. So this is going to be quite hard to deal with them, uh, but there seem to be ways of at least crowd controlling them or slowing them down. Um, if anything, they are definitely a distraction if we want to get uh, to a target and have a lot of hit points to chew through. So how are we going to uh, beat all of that? I have absolutely no idea. Potentially it's not possible, but that's the whole thing about it. You wanted to see my teeth getting kicked in and this is the best I can muster. I don't think that I've missed any mod that substantially increases the difficulty. This collection of mods uh, single-handedly makes Long War um, a jog in the park uh, because this year just it does not give you the tools that Long War allows you. This is essentially just giving you a uh, sucker punch every so often. And that's exactly the type of campaign that you can expect. So let's get back into the game and get rolling. Fantastic. We are back in action. Zirkim is standing here with his very nice uh, shorts overseeing a crash landing and it is time for a new game. I hope you're excited as excited as I am. This is definitely going to be a banger and uh, the one question that I would have though before we're uh, jumping in, some of the mods are actually giving us the opportunity to research some of the new aliens. 
Technically, I said we wanted to have zero benefits for XCOM and I can totally play it like that. Just ignore all of the new items. But if you think that the new items should be included and you want to see some of them, then leave a comment down below and let me really know how this campaign should be played. Should we uh, go for a strict keep XCOM as steady and stable as possible or shall we dabble into those new items and see if any of them are any good? I have no idea what they are, so I can't really uh, give a vested opinion. We're playing on Legendary, we're of course playing on Iron Man. I figured we're going to start with the uh, Skirmisher uh, from HQ this time, uh, because it is the least often chosen one. We've seen a lot of Templar starts, I certainly have uh, played with the Reaper HQ quite a bit, so Let's just make this one here about skirmishers um, and also try to get a skirmisher up. Uh, it's not really the perfect class for this challenge, but uh, might as well be one that we're uh, picking. We're definitely going for Grim Horizon, making all dark events permanent. And I don't want to use any of the other ones, although double length of timers, assuming uh, or anticipating just twice the amount of enemies and then on top yet twice the amount of hit points per enemy so effectively we're chewing through four times as much hit points and we just have the normal timers so potentially we're going to lose a lot of missions just based on the timers but that's part of the game cycle that you have signed up for we're going with the uh, great retro soundtrack and other than that I think it's time to continue and jump right into the game the look at that we already got our volunteers for the war zone in Vancouver let's see who is drafted I forgot to mention that all of your uh, mm, suggestions for the character pool have been included so if you have uh, notified uh, that in the last run and uh, and uh, wrote it down in the video you had a chance to be drafted into this campaign which brings me to the first uh, request if you want to be drafted for any future campaigns now is the right time to leave a comment with the type of soldier you want to see Anyways, we got our team together. Let's land and get the good old Gatecrasher mission off the table. We have a fix on the target. Good, fantastic. So you can see we have this nice little monitor up here for a little bit more viewer pleasure. We got uh, Toxic over here. Uh, he was one of uh, the... Uh, one of uh, the uh, heroes of the last rookie campaign. We got Anders, uh, who is with the team, uh, directly drafted. We got Grell over here. She's with the team as well. And we got Demon, a random skirmisher who hopefully can become a hero of this campaign. So let's get this going. Still trying to get used to this free uh, free camera mod. That is definitely a great quality of life. Okay, so we can see high ground over here. And I don't want to go through the low ground, although this position here is fantastic. It allows uh, for those second uh, story rooms. And those of you who have seen me play Gatecrasher know that these full cover spots here, yeah, here at the windows, the full cover spots, they are fantastic. High ground and full cover is a rare combination. You should take it whenever you can get. Anyways, let's move on. The entire team moves. And we got some nice little overwatches. I think we're trying to push for this building here on the right hand side. Enders is taking the point. Followed by Demon. And 
finally Grail moves over as well. Okay, perfect. So definitely nothing to the right, which was important. We're likely going to see enemies straight ahead. And the way that I would like to play that is... Let's slowly move up. Good. So we're looking at Advent Troopers. Um, so the way that you can read this here, apparently, I, uh, I would say this here is uh, uh, aim, 65, no defense, 12 movement, which is just as much as we have, willpower and hit points. I would need to look... Um, for three i think that's the amount of damage that's to be expected with their guns at least it would pretty much line up with what they're doing I go. we will use our Heading there now. skirmisher to take point from here on but for now let's just overwatch there's nothing wrong with waiting these guys are moving away, which is perfect. Currently, we're still dealing with the normal pot sizes. So, so far, it's not the hardcore run that I was promising. Not yet, but we'll give it some time. Alright, Toxic moves up. Pretty sure that this all of this is not triggering. There's just no angle how that could trigger. And yeah, this here is a bit too risky. I'll I'll wait. There's no need to be risky. No need to take any risks here. Okay, so like I said, point uh, point uh, will be taken by the demon. And we're just shortly waiting. Let's take a look. Unfortunately, this year doesn't have a second floor, a second story. Uh, it is a deeper room, one of those huge rooms. So we're not ending up with any form of high cover plus uh, full cover plus high ground. As you command. I would like to move a little bit closer. We know that there was a pack right over here. And they're coming back. Fantastic. So we're dealing with the really, really solid shots over here. However, we're not seeing all of them yet, so what I will do is we'll just give it one more turn and let them come a little bit closer. The third one was covered by that full cover. Plus, you also must uh, think about what will they do. This here is indestructible full cover, so of course we would want to make sure that they have that not available. There is another full cover here, fair enough, so that it, uh, that is an option. But uh, this one here gives great options to then move into another full cover and basically draw out the flank. This here is pretty much a dead end. You are standing here and then there's only half cover in movement reach. So uh, that open terrain is important. The other point that I wanted to make here is uh, if we were to throw a grenade... That'll be a decent opener. Yeah. As much as I like the justice uh, grab uh, for an insta kill, I think that would be uh, that would be dangerous. So instead of the grenade, I will do the classical opener, which is. Uh, two overwatches. I'll leave him 
uh, for now. And we're just going to see that we kill one of these guys. I would take one from the back uh, because they, the one next to the stairs, because he's most likely to jump down and I don't want that to happen. That's a very solid kill. Fantastic. Okay. Well, it's a good, st decent start. Good would be an overstatement. You know, we don't fight against that many enemies here. And he has indeed uh, taken the full cover that I was afraid he would take. Uh, one that is not removable, really, because it's indestructible. Well, that was lucky. 33% chance uh, for that to happen. Um, but I would have simply used the second grenade. Those guys have, re uh, have just moved into us, and yellow alert should... should uh mean that they are already triggered or almost triggered maybe i misunderstood the mod maybe it is just a chance no no there we go they actually were triggered oh boy well hello there Okay, well, the next pack also just added. Alright, so time for some place from Demon here. Good, that's one down. Thousands to go, it as they say. Could move up here. Can't fully get into a flanking position. Although, we can. And we should do that. Enders moves up. Let's clean the field as much as possible. How far can we throw? Could move to here. Throw at the sector port. The problem is we can't really kill him. Not in one go. What we could do though is we could move over here and try to remove his cover which we're not able to throw far enough that is unfortunate i don't want to take the 50 50s into full cover and i also don't want to go down because the zombie makes that a really really unappealing choice We do have a problem with demon, pretty significant one. One that we could solve by essentially removing this trooper here. But we would expose ourselves to the, uh, to the Psy zombie. And he has enough movement to get up here, so we gotta be careful. 
Unfortunately, we can't throw far enough. This is a bit of a frontal fight that I am not really keen on, on doing. Sometimes if you just go a little bit higher with the uh, with the camera, you will be able to hit these guys, but not here. Nope, simply not happening. Maybe something back here? No. Nice. That's unfortunate. Okay, we can flank him next turn. That'll be an option, but not for now. I want to get rid of him. This here could be a decent uh, chance, but I would much rather go for the sectored. Let's take the 50-50. Okay. Well, that at least gives us something to work with. Because from here, we're out of uh, reach of the commander, captain. The sector will mind spin, so that's not a big problem. All we need to do is we got to get rid of uh, this trooper here. 40% is not fantastic. But he wants to live. So he's hitting all of the shots. Great, fantastic. That worked a little bit better than expected. We still have the problem with the zombie, so I would uh, suggest we're going... Oh, ah, this here is clustered up. I don't like it. That almost asks for trouble. So might as well go for here. Okay, he cannot throw grenades at us uh, from where he's standing. The first to move, though, is going to be the zombie. And I don't want to have an overwatch shot uh, into the zombie, so we're going for the sector instead. Elsewise, overwatch would have been the right uh, choice so that the captain can't advance and throw his grenade. Luckily, he seemed to not carry one yet. There's the mind spin. All right. Like I said, the Psy zombie is a real threat. Moved up all the way over there. Yeah, I don't think we can actually reach the sectored. That's a bit of a problem. But we can continue to move away from the zombie and uh, just become aggressive. In this case, miss an 85% shot, which I was really, really, really hoping we would not miss. Now we do have a problem. Enderus is potentially going to die. The idea was to basically hit him, then use a grenade to finish him off. And just continue to kite the zombie. But that plan just evaporated. We could try to move here and still hit him in full cover. That's a 50-50, but um, it is also in range of the zombie. So we would get hit and the zombies are hitting quite hard. So that's a no-no. Now 
Moving up. Nah, that's too... Too unpredictable. You know, it's not a... It's not a perfect option, but I do have an idea. Uh, this is the creative way of dealing with a zombie, just letting him go down. And that is far enough away that he cannot reach anyone. Yes, we wasted one turn. That was not perfect, but it was better than nothing. I will overwatch in the hopes of him moving... Ooh, Anders, lucky. Alright, we hunkered down, that was good. That was fantastic. Psy Zombie doesn't really know what to do. The pathing was messed up, so that play was good. The one with the advent uh, captain here was utter, utterly bad. But what are you going to do? Sometimes you're, sometimes you're in between a rock and a hard place, and all you can do is hope for the best. All right, going here, Enders goes in deep. Time to deal with that officer. Nice one. Fantastic. That's what we're talking about. Anders, come on. Oh yeah, the man of the minute. Anders just continues to apply pressure. And... We can fragonate him. He has two actions, so... One for reload, one for fragging. That was a bit more difficult than I anticipated originally. Area is secure. We're not picking up any inbound contacts. Scanners are clear. Menace one five, we have a limited window to act before advent responds. We need to get those charges planted on the double. So I guess a couple of learnings here. Uh, yellow alert definitely makes the engagements a little bit more tricky because uh, there are factors that you cannot really control. In this case, uh, we started very well with the first pack, but then it just gradually got worse. I mean, we immediately got hit and almost uh, reduced to one hit point. Target selection was okay. Uh, but uh, it was just a standard uh, crew of enemies. So, so far, very standard mission, with the exception of the yellow alert that actually made it a little bit more difficult. Good. So, what is the good word, sir? The good word is three promotions <laughs> and nice little 30 days of Gravely Wounded. That's what you want to see after the first mission. Anders is becoming our sniper. Holy shit. Good job, man. Welcome uh, to the team. I am sincerely hoping uh, that the that the guy will recover soon. He has moderate cohesion with the others. We got Toxic here. Who in my book uh, did a fantastic job. Oh, yeah. That is so fitting. That is so fitting. It fits the whole style of the character very well. Toxic, good job. You just got uh, uh, to be a grenadier and a specialist. That's what I was hoping for. Means we're short of a ranger, but uh, we do have nonetheless a uh, skirmisher, which will hopefully make up for that. We have an incredibly high cohesion here, so those two will soon bond. Got a laser sight, that's good, and a few corpses. 
Of course, I wish we would have had a scope, but that uh, unfortunately was not a possibility. Let's look through our roster. So first, uh, we of course want to adjust the color coding uh, like normally. So we got uh, Toxic as our main Grenadier for now. Anders uh, will hopefully at one day become a sniper. Not sure if he will see uh, if we will see that day. Thirty days are quite a bit, and De Grell has earned the green colors of a specialist. I like that shoulder pad here. Looks good. Uh, the pens not so much, but okay, whatever. Anarchy Child never was known for the best visuals. We got Demon. Demon is gravely wounded, but only for nine days, which is good. Uh, who else is in our roster? We got Barbie here. Not that. Uh, welcome to the team. We got Sonar, fresh out of the last mission uh, from the Rookie Balboa run, made it to us. We got Dilly G, and that I know for sure is a new character. Welcome to the team, men. Uh, good job in getting drafted. We got Cannon, also a new viewer character. I love the hat, uh, that is very stylish. And we got Slicinator here. Uh, he is a returning member, but also not seen that often. Taurus, uh, who is a returning member. Implacable. Looks a little bit like a terrorist from Counter-Strike. And uh, Taxia. Love it. The good old eye patch uh, plus all white hair color. And I don't know where we get a random rookie when we do have like a cohort of others waiting. Uh, this is a bit annoying, so you're dismissed. Only if you're a character, sorry. Yep, it's one of those campaigns where we have the 20 uh, extra supplies to, to afford the luxury of dismissing someone. Good, let's go for new research. This is a heart campaign, so I will not do any shenanigans. We're going for weapons first to just go through the amount of just massive hit points. I am contemplating a flashbang grenade sooner than later, but I think for the very beginning, I would uh, like to go with the resistance ring, I, I guess. GTS is an option as well. GTS is an option as well that would give us at least more training and squad side upgrades. Yeah, let's go with GTS first, uh, RR second. We of course do not have an engineer yet. And that's pretty much it. Looks like a good start. I'll keep the 75. So, oh, yes, that's the type of start that you would like to see. So, in case you're wondering what these things here are... Okay, wait, before I explain something, let's take a look. We got inside job and private channel, and uh, we got another recruit a scientist in the ring available. We'll look for that in a second. So. This year is the Dark Elder HQ, and this year is the Bandit HQ. The reason why they are up here and why you can see these uh, bases is each of the factions uh, that we have added has a home base, an HQ, and you can raid them later. So this is going to be another fun mission. I don't think that we will ever make it that far in this run, but uh, just in case, there is the option to do that. In terms of... In terms of just um, just all of the options that we would be getting uh, from the skirmishers, I was hoping that I could uh, look them up here, but potentially we can only look them up at the end of uh, the month. 
the one uh, um, covered ops mission that we will be getting is uh, the one uh, that will allow us to get another scientist. So this scientist here plus the covert ops scientist already will be two. That's fantastic because we can speed up uh, the research pro uh, progress and that means faster weapons, faster everything. So that's good. I like it. Um, I don't want to go for experimental weapons yet. I would like to... Uh, uh, these here are just vests, but this here would allow us to uh, use PCSs. So might as well do that. And we got some more rookies. Well, after I dismissed one, maybe getting three in return isn't the worst trade. So I'll take it. And we got our first mission on top of it, which gives us an engineer. See, RNG is already on our side. The game knows fair well that Saiken will get his teeth kicked in. Uh, so we're going for an easy mission. Let's see how difficult this is going to be. Uh, for a potential engineer. Uh, so this is going to happen next time. We are on a good start. I actually enjoy what I'm seeing so far. If you like what you're seeing as well, then please leave a comment down below because I would like to hear your thoughts about this campaign. What's the, what's the part that intrigues you the most about it? Uh, are the mods what you have expected? Is this sufficiently hard? Have I missed something? Those were the questions that uh, I asked myself when uh, putting the 100 mods together. And I'd like to hear your opinion about it. We see each other in two days and uh, have a good one. Until then, bye bye.